Hi, afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Ruth Turner, and um, as Kath said, I'm one of the AFRUSI specialist nurses. Uh, there's a team of four of us, so there's two, actually two nurses in the south and two nurses in the north. Um, Rosanna and I are just going to be doing this presentation today. Um, just got a few slides to go through with you and a couple of videos for you to watch. Um, it's quite a basic presentation, um, nothing too complicated, so I hope you all enjoy it. I'm just going to click through the slides. OK, so um, the first slide just shows a timeline of um, the journey, really, from when we started collecting plasma for medicine. So you may know that we were collecting um, convalescent plasma before we pivoted to P PFM. Um, and that pivot happened in April of this year. Um, so the convalescent plasma was collected, obviously, as a response to um, the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and then in February of this year, the health minister, Lord Bethel, announced that the government had decided to lift the ban on the use of UK plasma for the production of immunoglobulins. And we are delivering on the plasma programme um, on behalf of the Department of Health and Social Care, which is responsible for the decisions on the future of the programme, including um, ongoing funding and possible extension to collections, um, targets, how much we need to collect and the scale of the national donor centre network. So that's just a kind of timeline and some headlines that have happened throughout the last six months. So what is plasma for medicine? So we collect plasma um, via two routes uh, currently. Um, the first route and how we started in April was just collecting it via um, apheresis technology. So plasmapheresis technology, which we call source plasma, so SPFM. And we also in August started collecting what we call recovered plasma from whole blood donations. And the um, plasma that we're collecting at the moment is um, sent to our own manufacturing sites where it's rapid frozen within 24 hours of collection, um, tested, uh, obviously, to make sure that it's suitable. And then we're storing it so that it can be supplied to um, a, an appointed fractionator who will eventually process the plasma and manufacture it into the medicines required. Um, there are 17,000 UK patients who rely on immunoglobulin medicines, which is manufactured from plasma for short term and lifelong diseases and genetic disorders. And until now, all UK patients have been dependent on imports of plasma. And most of our plasma at the moment comes from the US. And obviously, this has been um, quite severely impacted by the pandemic. So there's a, a glowing a, sorry, a growing global shortage of plasma at the moment. And you can see some um, statistics there of what our goals are to collect um, 187,000 litres of plasma in the first year and up to 380,000 litres of plasma per year going forward. Um, and in three years, we hope to supply 30% um, of England's uh, pl plasma supply. So as I said, we're collecting plasma in two ways. Um, so the SPFM is obtained via apheresis technology. And for those of you who are not familiar with that, apheresis is um, a, a separation of cells. So the blood is collected as whole blood into the machine and via a process of centrifugation, it's separated into its component parts. Um, we already had a infrastructure, as I said, from the CVP project. So um, we're just building on the resources and the infrastructure that we already had in place um, and collecting the um, uh, collecting the SPFM in those donor centres that we had already set up. Um, the recovered plasma is going to be collected on our whole blood donation teams who are um, 
uh, and we're sort of ramping up for for that collection at the moment. That's like I said, that started in August uh, with just a few teams that were involved in that, and it's gradually ramping up. And uh, all teams will be collecting, and obviously the target there uh, is split between the two um, the two ways that we're collecting it. So the SPFM target is sixty two thousand units in the first year and one hundred twenty five thousand um, liters in this uh, from um, recovered PFM. Hopefully that all makes sense to everybody. Um, so this is just some pictures of the technology that we are um, that we're hoping to be able to to validate going forward. So um, the machine that you can see on the left here, that's part of the machine that we currently use, which is called a Trema machine that's supplied to us by a company called Terumo. And we, we already use that machine. We're already very familiar with that machine. Um, we use it to collect platelets and concurrent plasma at the moment. And our source, uh, source SPFM, um, we're using that to collect that at the moment. We need to validate that to um, just collect plasma going forward. So we're looking at new um, software updates and different harnesses that um, Terumo are supplying to us, which are specific just for plasma collection. Um, in the middle, you can see another machine which is um, called an Aurora um, plasmapheresis machine. It is supplied to us by the company Fresenius KB, and it is specifically for collecting plasma. We are in the process of validating that machine as well. And then finally, at the moment, we've got um, the uh, Nexus PS. PCS, sorry, I'm getting my words mixed up. Um, and that is another machine. And all of these machines work through centrifugation and filtration to make sure that we are um, collecting gold standard um, plasma that is leucodepleted and obviously isn't going to cause any harm to recipients once it's been manufactured. So it's a really um, sort of in-depth validation process that we're going through at the moment. There's a lot of work going on in the background. And um, yeah, it's 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 quite exciting and quite innovative. And we're all very excited about um, the outcomes and, and hopefully, you know, using new technology going forward. Um, as I said, we have 10 donor centres at the moment that we're collecting from. Um, they kind of spread out nationally. Um, we are hopeful that we may be able to expand that a little bit because you can probably see from the geographical spread, we're sort of lacking in the east of the country and the far southwest of the country. So there may be an opportunity, depending on funding going forward, if um, if we can expand those those centres. So um, that picture is a picture of Stratford um, Donor Centre, which is at the Westfield Shopping Centre in London. Uh, very, very busy centre, um, obviously lots of footfall. And, um, and and then obviously the other the other sites are there listed as well. And then this is just a quote from one of our lovely donors who um, we, we have a really sort of dedicated and committed donor base, which obviously we need to expand upon. We haven't got nearly enough donors at the moment. So there's lots of marketing plans going on in the background as well. And they're going to be launched um, very, very soon to encourage people to come forward to donate. Um, we're hoping that we might be able to convert some lapsed donors and donors that we haven't necessarily needed in the past for whole blood donations, different blood groups that, um, you know, we don't need to collect because they're, they're very rare um, blood groups and you know, we just don't use the red blood cells, um, but they would be ideal for converting into plasma donors. So, um, that was just a quote from one of our donors. And as you can see, we even have our staff sometimes in the middle picture there who are really committed and want to help build the, the stocks of plasma. Um, so it was just a nice quote that we felt that we wanted to include. And um, we've just got a little video for you to watch um, in the next slide. Um, and this is a this is a journey. Uh, a donor journey it's just over a minute long so it shouldn't take too long to watch um and this was recorded in stratford um so bear with me i'll just press play and hopefully that will work
Thanks, Ruth. Um, so as Ruth, Ruth mentioned, um, we're still actually awaiting for a fractionator to be appointed by Public Health England. Um, however, we wanted to show you a few um, clips so that you could visualise what happens to the plasma uh, once it would leave our freezers and NHS BT. So there's a video here of, um, this is actually albumin being made, but just to give you an idea of the sort of processing that would happen during the fractionator's manufacturing site. Um, if you can get past the 80s synth music, it's quite an interesting video. So I'll just ask uh, Ruth to press play on it now, please. OK, so I hope you uh, found that interesting. And for us, obviously, as well as making sure that our regular altruistic donors um, are looked after and have an enjoyable experience while donating, the really rewarding uh, part of our job is hearing how Plasma for Medicines helps to save and improve lives. So we have a few testimonies that we've received uh, as NHSBT has received, sorry, from families who've been directly uh, affected by receiving plasma for medicines. And in fact, uh, on the next slide, there is a one of these quotes was made into a marketing campaign that we recently run uh, as well to try and promote people to come in to donate plasma. Um, so this final clip is from a woman called Charlotte who received plasma earlier this year, not only as an exchange, but as well as um, in IVIGs. And yeah, to us, this is sort of like the reason why our job is so enjoyable when we hear how it's helped to save and improve lives. Um, so I hope those three videos there um, show you the full journey from donation uh, from someone donating plasma to someone receiving plasma um, and helps you visualise that process. And I'll just leave you with this powerful picture of Dan, who also received plasma for medicines. Um, and that's it, really. If anyone's got any questions, we'd be happy to try and answer them as best as we can.